go on this one on Facebook in a relationship with women. Yeah. In a relationship with Martin. Yeah. Just be canon. I want to go and make in a relationship with Martin. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Good. I have to take my mind. Teresa, yeah, remember me never really asked her for paying on your taxi fee, right? So everything cool. You go buy a popcorn, you want to be romantic, you buy one popcorn. You know it is already, right? So you come to Boomer and put your popcorn. Teresa, I'll have some in her hand. She'll go and she want them after all of the popcorn. <laughs> what do you see? Because yes. Teresa put some in her hand and then I'll eat same way to make sure she have a look. She have a reserve, so we don't want to sit down. Right? <laughs> right. So now, put your gas out your feet. Yeah, because you said, you know, Teresa moves a crazy. Should I eat before you come? <laughs> yeah. So you understand, say, no, marketing is about building this relationship which depends on perception. Oh, you think a woman should have been? Can you think a woman should have tried your mouth to pop down? You should have tried going style, style, maybe after two months, maybe she lost the business. But the first time, so, there, so therefore we understand. So marketing is two things. It is. Una, una understand so far? All right, good. So uh, it's two things. It is time. <laughs> I thought it was right. It is time. And satisfaction. So therefore, yeah, that's satisfaction. So, <laughs> no, 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 everybody knows satisfaction. Because I try to get us that out there. But anyway, so satisfaction means time. Over being satisfied, continuously satisfied, right? You are going to know have a long term relationship. Now, let us look at satisfaction. Satisfaction is when the actual is greater than or equal to the expected. So, what happens is you are going to purchase on what you call value. You see, a lot of people think people purchase based on price or people purchase based on, 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 on benefit or quality. But no, you purchase based on value. Where value is very important. And please don't bother right. This is not high school, right? Depend on the notes. Value, expected value, is equal to expected benefit over expected outlay. Everybody can see it? Good. Now, you wrote this one as an expected price. Because the expected outlay is equal to price plus future cost plus risk. I will have shown you now. So therefore, we are going to look upon many, many possible goods out there. And we are going to say which one of these have the greatest expected value. And that is to compare benefits and outlays. 
Now, if it was only benefits, nobody would have buy a Suzuki Swift. Because Benz have more benefit. If it was only Oakley, nobody would have buy a Benz. Because it's Oakley cheap. Are you understanding that? So make a look on it now. You have the price plus the future cost plus the risk. It is this formula that calls for our shoes downtown to be the same, to be cheaper than the same exact shoes uptown. You know, never think about it yet. Why are shoes uptown? can be cheaper, or not can, is cheaper than the exact same shoes downtown. Why is it that a man like me can go uptown, try on the shoes, and then go downtown and buy it? <laughs> Everything I teach you, I teach you about life. <laughs> you cannot go downtown and try on the shoes. It's very risky. Be a people of a swarm you know, and stress. So you go uptown and sit down and then tell them, say, soon come back. And they like, give me a size 19 man. That's how you work it, right? No, why is it? It is because this is a mathematical equation. You ever heard about that thing we call commutative law? Commutative law is saying that the way in which you add and multiply numbers don't affect the result. So commutative law says that 3 plus 2 plus 5 equals 10. But also 5 plus 2 plus 3 equals 10. But also, 2 plus 5 plus 3 equals 10. Now, let us put some things here. Price, future cost, risk. At the point that price is 3, let's say future cost is 2. Then the risk is 5. Now, look at the point when the price is 5. The risk is 3. So you have to don't subsidize risk with price. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when the price is five, if the risk should increase from three to five, then the price has to reduce from five to three, so as to maintain equilibrium. Are you understanding? That? So if you don't maintain that equilibrium, if I had an equal chance of being shot in half a tree, then couldn't charge me more money. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So that's why the same house in a Jackson are going to be more expensive than the same house at Waterhouse. Because that risk must be subsidized by price. In fact, if you bought 9 11, yeah. and you never bought it, right? Yeah. Um, September 9 11. And it was like 2. After 9 11, after the plane crash, people said, I'm not flying, I'm not one dead, right? And then do this research and say, um, Would you fly um, to Jamaica? No, would you fly to Jamaica? Because the terrorists are going to show up go one. Would you fly if it is cheap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one dead, but if it's cheap, I, I risk it. You know? That's the reality of life. We're all willing to do that. So, if I said to you, there is a Benz selling down in Tivoli for $100 and it's a 2017 Benz, what would you do? Yeah. Huh? You have a wonder. You have to say, is it a thief in Benz? Yeah. You have to say, something must be wrong with it. Yeah. Who much money to fix it? So you talk about future costs because I want you to have the Benz, but maybe I have 50 million to fix it. That's the future cost. That's why you consider that. I you say everything I already Benz, but when police come lock me up, me not really depend on that stress. Eh? <laughs> Buying stolen goods. Are you, are you understanding that? So you look at all these things now. Are you understanding? And then you go. So I'm going to ask a question. Where do you know me, love? Mm -hmm. Chris Ann, you and your boyfriend, Jeff, right? Jeff? Andre, what cool? Chris and call Jeff, he's our pet name for you, right? So, you and Jeff, you go uptown, you're going to have Valentine's dinner, right? You know this place where you use poor people like as um, entertainment? Any hey, name again? Strawberry Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you go up there and say, don't be so pretty, but I might like Billy Alupan, you know? <laughs> That's why I'm like, I might like 6 o'clock. I'm not going to have nobody use my light. <laughs> so, you've got Strawberry Hill, right? And Andre, comes a boom and order food, right? You get the big plate. You know, when you go to real restaurant, you get the big plate, but then the food comes in one little plate. So then, you know, you see, then you get the little plate. And then you have lobster, and you have mashed potato, and you have um, tomato cut out like a rose, because we don't have a box food. That's about you. Right? And thing, and you eat, and you take a picture, 
put it up on your Instagram and say, I'm so in love, right? But I rub down your mouth, just wipe it off, and instead of wiping up, just keep it off. And you know, that's the deal, right? Now, Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam, I'm right in my side. So, boom, no. And you come, so you post it. And you say, so you love your friend, then run in and I say, oh my God, girl, leave it up, right? And so, right? It's all good, right? And then now, a man come with a, with a violin, and he might play some, some song, right? And you say, yo, you feel good. How you feel? You feel nice. You say, yo, a long time, Mr. Meet, Andre. All right. Then the bill come and them said 200,000. How you feel now? <laughs> you don't feel so good again. So your sister is not only the benefit. Because you have to say, yo, the price, you know, work, not 200,000. Andre, I say, yo, you better can't watch me, because I never have that. <laughs> All right? Cool. All right. No. The next year now, Andre, you know, it's your mistake. Because you say, yo, 200,000, me have to take bank loan, and I know me don't do it. <laughs> right. So you come, say, so you call a restaurant, say, hello, restaurant, and them say, yeah, you say, how much for the food? And them say, $300. You say, all right, don't tell my girl, though, let's do this. So you come, and run you with $300, right? And them come with white rice and um, corned beef, because you know, red and white have anything. Like thing. How you feel? Catch now, she's going to take a picture of that and say, I want this. I right? Right? So, right. So at that time, now, you're going to feel stressed out. So it's obviously not just the price. So sometimes when people have them shop and them ear just and things, they perceive that the price is the most important thing. But if you're providing me a service, me that pay more for the service if it have enough benefit. And another man think the benefit is the greatest thing, but if it's too expensive, me not willing to pay that much for it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So therefore, we have to check it out and say that the expected value is based on expected benefit over expected outlay. Everybody understand that? Cool. So then now, we are going to compare our actual value to our expected value. So, how do you feel about the class so far? Feel good? Feel like it's a good class? That means you never expect not much. So you're satisfied because you never really expect not much. Now, if you come in the next class and it's the same, you're not as satisfied. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because your satisfaction is when the actual is greater than the expected. Who work? Like real work. You work? Yeah. You get P and M something there? All right. Cool. <laughs> No, I'm gonna know some people, right? Sorry, where you name? Raquel, where you name? All right. And you, you work too? You're not doing work at the same place? No. Look like you work at Flow. You work at Flow? <laughs> okay, because Flow kind of pop up. But all right, they come now, right? So you work at your place. You work at Flow, you look stressed out. You're... <laughs> all right. So if when you come to expect 80,000 a pay, when you got the bank, it's 60,000. How you feel? Why? No, because the actual is less than the expected. So you're dissatisfied. No, if you're going to get 80,000, but you say 100. Yeah, or if I'm dry, don't get a mistake. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Because, because why, so why are you satisfied? Because the actual is greater than the expected. You know what I'm saying? A regular life, marketing is regular life. So when you sell a man a product, he will be satisfied if the actual is greater than what he expected. Are you understanding? That is why a lot of times your relationship go bad. Because when you just meet the girl, you're creating an expectation that you cannot maintain. So when you just meet her, you call her every day. Hey baby, wait, 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 right? Yeah, then no, you talk till all the phone at your ears. Yeah, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to lay down, you're under earth, you say you have to the phone to play Right? And then no, when I have a style, they say, so um, I'm going to bed now. Um, and she say, okay, I'm up. They say, no, you are up. And then no, she say, um, right? So, yeah. Right. And then, you did it, right? So she have an expectation now, so you have to call her every day. By the time she say, all right, she like you, you don't have no more story. You see, that's the problem. It's not that you don't like her again. But when are 20 and 21, right? Where are you going to get enough story if you tell somebody eight or one day for the next 30 years? They don't have enough story. You understand? So therefore, by the third week, you run out of story. So all you call her, I say, where you are saying? She said, I don't know where you are saying. So that's right, look up. So, 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 so after a while now, she now becomes dissatisfied because what she expects when you are quoting her is not what she gets when in her actual relationship. Are you understanding? So a man said to me, say, yo, D, I'm teaching about life now, right? The best thing for a man to them is to be a low expectation. So you call her once every three weeks. 
So even though you are not really you know, and you call her once a week, she'll be like, yo! Everybody see, everybody see, right? So therefore, we're not allowed, right, right. So therefore, man said, this is what we're gonna do. We're going to drop the expectation and get now overperform. And she's gonna love me. But the problem is by the time you call her the second time, three weeks later, somebody answer the phone and say, who this? The man vibes like, yo, dad, who this? I say, um, um, 30 grand for the phone, yeah? <laughs> so what I say to you is that the actual initial purchase is based on expectation. If the expectation isn't high enough, then the first purchase would be made for you to know actual. Are you understand? So that's why now you have to continuously renew your goods because your goods have to continuously be greater than what was expected. Why? Because the last actual is the new expected. All right. What is this? Is that what? Is that smoothie? No. But <laughs> <laughs> but alright, you, you think it's a smoothie. So I give it to you and you drink it and you find it's a milkshake. The next time I come with something like this and say, what is it? What are you going to say? Because your last actual is a new expected. Are you understanding? Yeah. So the thing that you actually experience, I give you something and say, yo, drink some of this now. Um, it is, it is, it is um, cream soda. And it's a cream soda? Oh yeah, the walk over and I say, no man, I'm cream soda. Drink. And when you drink it, I curse now. <laughs> the next time you carry on and drink some of this, you drink it? Because you expect it to be cursing. Your last actual is a new expected. Now, if your last actual is a new expected, the only way the next actual can be greater than expected is if it's greater than the last actual. That's why a company has to continuously improve its products. If it's going to satisfy people. Now, pre come. Everybody understand. So, therefore, now, what really happened, well, we have to show you that later, is that there is some foundation of marketing that we must understand. Now, the foundation <laughs> of marketing is needs. And need is a state of self deprivation. You see, everything where you sell or can sell or can offer to a person for consumption must be based on a state of self deprivation. Not a state of deprivation, you know. Because you can be deprived and don't feel deprived. You, you understand me as I'm in general? Wait a minute. Mark, what's your message now, Mark? If you look in your fingernail and see white mark, you're short of calcium. Now, 90% of them are going to look right now. <laughs> if you see white mark, you're going to say, John, we need some milk. You were always deprived, you know. But you never feel deprived until it highlighted to you. Are you understanding now? So it is not the existence, but it is the actual recognition, the feeling. You ever do one by yourself yet and not no wrong? You ever do one by yourself and start scrolling through your old phone? That's when you feel deprived of friends. But you can do by yourself and don't feel deprived. No. But there's another time, the same exact occurrence. And you start, you start, you start some number where you're not sure if you can call it, because you haven't called in a minute. Are you understanding? That? So it is the feeling. You ever lay down and feel peckish? Country people alone know them things. They tell people no. Peckish means you're not really hungry. <laughs> but you could eat. That's what uptown people. So the king some six people them know them just to understand. I could eat. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're hungry no, but I could eat. Right? So you could eat. You're not moving on or nothing because you just could eat. But if you look at bread, I come now, you say, yo, go for a piece of bread for me now. That's one of the number one reasons why you should get married. Can you can ask your wife to go for things for you all the time. Just lay down, lay down, lay down. You say, baby, can you go for some water for me, please? Right? And she can't say no, can you say please? <laughs> <laughs> and then every girl go, what, what, what? As soon as they love somebody, all right, baby. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you want ice in it, right? So anyway, it's safe enough state of felt deprivation. Now, everybody feel deprived of something at some time. Now, that's why you have the hierarchy of needs. Maslow hierarchy of needs. It is saying that at some point you feel deprived of a different thing. The first thing you feel deprived of might be physiological need. Like food. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Or shelter. Then now you have the, 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 the safety needs. Like um well, safety. Then you have the 
social needs like friendship. Then you have the esteem needs like um, feeling like I'm a boss. And then you have the self-actualization needs. Now may I use tourism and explain to you what feel deprived means. Those needs are into higher order and lower order needs. You don't know about them things that do sociology? No. Yeah, this is to teach sociology, right? Jata Crawford, and can go do our course, right? So, all right. So, I mean, teacher, I teach this, so she should have learned, but she doesn't reach So, yeah. <laughs> So you have, the, you, have the, you have the lower order needs, which are the physiological needs and the safety needs. And you have the higher order needs, which are the other three. So the, the, the social needs, the esteem needs, and the self-actualization needs, right? Now, tourism can only be fueled by the higher order needs. Because if a man travels for food, not to experience food enough, but because he's deprived of food, he's not a tourist. He's now a nomad. You think no man can come and say, oh, tourists, Jamaica have five more people? If a man travel for safety because he feels deprived of safety, you want to be safe when you travel. But if you travel in search of safety because you feel deprived, you're a refugee. You think one time some man run away from Sudan and go to America and write down, oh, 50 tourists came today? <laughs> because the need is not a higher order need. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, if you travel to France or any you want to go to France? Yeah. You travel to France, you want to experience food. But you never travel for food. Because that food is now esteemed. Can you come back and tell everybody you know what I had? Are, are you understanding? So that is not a deprivation of food. You possibly have a belly full because you might not like it. But it's now to experience food. That's different from deprivation. So a need is a deprivation, a state of felt deprivation. I need food and I'm going to go somewhere to get it. I need safety and I'm going to run away from this risk to go to safety. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, if you need friends, that's a higher order need. For example, they said that 82% of people who travel to Jamaica expect sex. 82% of people who travel to Jamaica expect sex. Some people are saying, yo, I'm never told rent a dread or kind of thing, right? No, the reality is most of them expect it from each other. Like him and his wife come. Now, if you and your wife go on a vacation, you don't expect it. My wife go on a vacation, she has to be full. She's a fight, me a fight. That's a jealous side, they can't move. So, therefore, the reality of the situation is that there are these higher order needs, like you have a country where you want to go before you're dead. Everybody, you have a country where you want to go before you're dead. No? You don't school where they're right now. You ask Australia? Yeah, what you say? Dubai, what you say? Italy, what you say? Man, try. Where? You want to jump on? All right, cool. Where you say? Yeah, all right, cool. Minister of Security. I'm not really want to take on my visa. Wait. You want a two place? That's how you repeat I? You want to do it? Roll the back. Twist ear. Yeah, where you say? You twist ear. You don't know the ear style, I look around like. Yeah. You are a Tyler. No. Everybody have this thing. So therefore, when you realize no 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 one go Africa, when you realize that. When you realize that you really stay by. Like nobody must say Kenya. Nobody must say Yeah, Ghana. No way, right? So right now the black style like, I wouldn't have no passing Japanese. Because all of we just want to go some European place. But something has been created in our minds to expect good from those and expect bad from the other. So that's why low expectations don't lead to purchases. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So gentlemen, you can't know call her once every three weeks because it wouldn't purchase. So you have this state of faith deprivation. All of us go through it. But how we actually choose to eat is based on our wants. And want is your need as expressed by your socialization. How I choose to satisfy this want is based on how we socialize. So let's look at it. If I'm hungry after a party in Jamaica, what me eat? You need jerk chicken. All right. Anybody here not from Jamaica? Antigua. Where? Antigua. You're from Antigua. Where you eat after party? Burger King. What? Burger King. Bur See? Wait. Stressing out right now. <laughs> after party, eat Burger King. If somebody there from Trinidad, then they eat doubles. If somebody there from Barbados, then they eat um, shark and beef. If somebody there from St. Vincent, then possibly one green figs, which is banana. I can't understand how you eat banana at night time, but they do. <laughs> So therefore, all of us are hungry after the party, but we act differently based on our socialization. 
Are, are, are you understanding us? So therefore, it is now everybody feels deprived. But different customers exist because of different socialization. So what we actually want is different based on how we are socialized. Everybody, everybody with me? Good. So you go to a party, right? And everybody are dance. I can look at the dancing and know where you're from. Like the Trinidad people, they might dance sexy, like, whoa, yeah. You are dancing at Trinidad girl with us and say, whoa, me love it, right? <laughs> the Bayesian people, them dance kind of rough. You are dancing at Asian person as a bump in the <laughs> Right? Cool. The Jamaican people know, it's a competition. <laughs> it's like she said to her friends, watch her make a mash up the youth, right? <laughs> so you are dancing, then she are dancing, just deep on you like, what? <laughs> By the time you dip, she are covered up, she dip on their chin. <laughs> Right? Nobody never knew that this was in it. It's crazy, right? Then she got on the sand, she just gets and said, You ready? You ready? And then she just run. She jump and turn in the air like that. You catch her on the run, go back down the street. No, when you do that, you know, she never look at you like, What's going on? What is this? This is madness, right? But you don't come from Jamaica, you have to chill party boring, you can't live now. You select that, you don't tell them to dash them, Brazil. Are you understanding? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is how you're expression of what you need based on how you socialize. So when I came to you for the first time, I thought you parties were very boring. Come come from ghetto. Ghetto party, the selector of you say something. The selector is the feature of the party. The man have to say, yo, if you have your man in England and the girl and say, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You must introduce the stuff. Right? If you keep a party in the ghetto and your fence don't kick down, it's a flat party. You understand? Because your fence have to kick down. And yeah, and shoes are the last. Those things are part of my party. So I'm come you, you know. But who come from uptown and say, chat too much. Every minute in the attack. So that shows you said it's socialization. How we're socialized. Everybody understand. So when you are selling a product, you have to know what is the socialization of the consumer of my product. Because yes, the ear won't do. But all you want his ear do or she want her ear do is based on how they're socialized. Yes, them eyebrow won't shave. But all them eyebrow are shave is based on how them socialize. Yeah, you know, like woman always shave them eyebrows. But you're going to find that some people just want it line up. Some people want it take off. But it's just based on that. Right? Take it off and then put up in. Right? But it's based on how they're socialized. So anytime you are selling a product, your first basis is to understand the socialization of the person you're seeking to sell. Everybody understands. Because the deprivation moves into want. Now after want becomes need. And, and I mean, sorry, after need come want, and after want come demand. Demand is simply want back by income. You see, not what we want, but we don't have the money. Now, what kind of marketing is what? We don't have a fear. <laughs> Just still enough. <laughs> a profitable relationship. Therefore, a man who wants but cannot afford to want, that's not a profitable relationship. That might be a relationship, but not a profitable relationship. Are you understanding us? So marketing take it one step further from wants and say that there is demand, want, but by income. You ever see a Benza advertising on X News? Why? Because if you're reading X News, you like it, cannot afford a Benz. Are you understanding us? You don't have that income. If you're reading Dopey Story, you really don't have enough money to buy a Benz. Why do you think them come with Kiara and advertise at you? At some point, you'll be able to buy a car. No, they're not going to go to some other place where you're not going to be able to buy a car and advertise a car. Are you understanding? You're not going to see Kiara advertise a passa passa. Because <laughs> I don't expect we, but if you go to an uptown party where for $15,000 to go in, Kiara go on a spawn site. Because those people like you to be able to. Are, are you understanding? So I want a boat, but I don't have money for the boat right now. Are, are, are you understanding? So my want isn't backed by income. Everybody understand us. So therefore, this demand is the one but by income or buying power. Everybody understand? So understanding that now, I'm going to make a market offer. Any product that you are putting out is an offer, a market offer. And this is a combination of product, service, information, or experiences offered to the market to satisfy a need or a want. Marketing myopia is focusing only on existing ones and losing sight of underlying customer needs. 
So therefore, you see people are wearing something and you say, oh yeah, I'm going to start selling that. And you don't know why they're wearing it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What is the deprivation of making them wear that? Like you have some ladies now who used to wear this handicap pants. You remember them? Or the waist up at the breast part, so make them look like them body in no shape, right? <laughs> like, I give me a couple pick you up on your belt and their titty. I'm like, mm. <laughs> I understand. Now, the question is, why she buy that? Is it because she want to look disabled? Or because everybody are it and she want fit it? Now, when you have a store, if you understand why she buy it, then you can be ahead of the next trend. Because she want fit it, she's teaching about that. About the influencers and the, and the followers and the laggards, right? But you have, to have a certain thing. Like, I used to wear a sweat bottom one time in the summer. I couldn't follow me. Jamaica people, everybody had on a sweat bottom. But it was just style. It wasn't that we were trying to get fit. <laughs> if you only watch the ones and don't understand the underlying deprivation, they go open a gym say everybody want to get fit. And want to a gym. It popped them because nobody really wanted to get fit. We just wanted to be in style. Are, are, are you understanding this? So when you understand the current expression, but don't understand the underlying deprivation, then you're actually flapping in your company. Are you understanding this? Let me make sure you're not understanding it because I can't see only one left school and work for people, you know, right? Now have to sell something. So therefore, customer satisfaction, and we are going to try to achieve this customer satisfaction. All right, now remember we talk about value, right? Expected value. Now, every product has its own expected value within all of our minds. So you might have a different perception of a product as versus you as versus you, the same exact product, but you don't expect it to be the same value. May I give you an example? If you sell me a car and it has a loudspeaker, that's important to me. That's not important to my mother. So the same exact car, that don't have no importance to she. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So she perceives less value in a car with loudspeaker or rim or anything other than engine steering and tire. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because when my mother comes out of the car, she wants to talk to you about your business. You understand? You ever, your mother, if you're in the car, ask me some questions, just a press gas, like, you know, busy about me. Like, I'm never really sure this lady I go, come here. You don't scare me, right? So, therefore, there's this original set of all the things that exist in the world. You know everything that exists in the world? Therefore, you don't have that. So you have another set within that of the awareness set. So all the drinks that exist in the world, but then we have the drinks that we are aware of. Are you understanding that? Now, all the drinks that you are aware of, you want to drink them? So then you have the evoke set, the ones that are interested in. Like you have one next one named Guzla, nobody knows that. People drink that? You have a thing when you um, one red thing when you see people are drinking now. Um, Campari, that's a pies. <laughs> I drink some Campari, I couldn't believe that's how it really tastes. It really tastes like cursing now. Mix it in tonight. But somehow we are drinking, right? So you have the awareness set and then you have the evoke set. So that's what I'm interested in. So let us say you're thirsty. Um, Catman, what are you here? Yeah, eh? All right, that's a cat man coming at you. If you're thirsty, where you want to drink? Water. Water. What else? Orange juice. Orange juice. What else? Fruit punch. Fruit punch. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, fruit punch. All right. No, I put it to you that you want to drink white rum. When you're thirsty. Yes? I was kind of incorrectly putting it to you, but I'm putting it to you. <laughs> you likely go have white rum in your evoke set for thirst. Are you understanding that? So we did this now. All you have to choose which one you have to drink. You're going to use this here. Expected value. So you check it out and say the expected value of water is equal to what benefit water gives. Let's say 10 benefits and what outlay? Three outlay. So therefore, that value is 3.33. Then now it's the expected value of 
orange juice equal 8, 2 equal 4. Expected value of fruit punch equal 6, 5 equal 1.2. All right, based on Norman's assumption, you should choose orange juice because orange juice have the greatest value. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, you might ask, sir, how come water, beer, and orange juice? Remember that expected value is not only price. Maybe no water not in here, you have to go walk where you don't have a bowl, and you don't walk along a bowl. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Maybe the water we buy last evening can belly earthy and you know sure if I pipe water them two in the back. <laughs> are, are, are you understanding that? So therefore the total outlay can increase. So in this evoke set, you're going to choose based on the quickly calculated expected value in your mind. Are, are you understanding? Everybody understand? Good. And if it is that you find that there is orange juice. It should lead to an exchange. Exchange is the act of obtaining a desired object from someone by offering something in return. So therefore, I said to myself, orange juice. When you say you want orange juice, what do you do now? You offer them money or some other value. And why when I say money is because you could have bought it. Car companies do that all the time. Not true. So your company give me that and me give you some of this. Suppose Digicel want to send us. Digicel can say, all right, we give you a free phone bill up to the amount of the money for come and send us. Are you understanding? And then them say, all right, you can have a retreat. So therefore, you can find that out. So you have this exchange. So the market is now the actual and potential buyers of a product. That's one of the fundamental mistakes we make. We think the market is only the actual buyers of a product. Any name, my love? You have children? All right, you want to have children? All right, so you want um, ovens to buy? No? You're going to buy some ovens and put them till you have children? No. So you're not a current purchaser of ovens. You're not a current purchaser. But should ovens care about you? Because you are a future purchaser. So Oggies want to know, say, at the point where them say it's a boy, you say, where is the Oggies? <laughs> Are you understanding? Now a lot of us ignore the future purchasers, only focus on the current. And by extension, our market don't grow. Are you understanding? Me? So if never hear just that, I'm going to make sure I advertise to own a fifth farm. Because by the time I'm six farm, I'm going to want hear style. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So that is why now you find say them come and you become advertised. Because you might not be able to buy now. But you are in the future market. Now what's the future market? What's the market? The market is current and future demanders. So demanders means that those who either have the want and don't have the money yet. Or those who have the money and don't have the want yet. Are you understanding it? I get deep. But you never understand. If the man is want but by income. Then a man can have any side of the continuum. He can either have income and not want, or he can have want and not income. So therefore, I can afford hoggies, but I have no baby to put pan. So I have income and not want. Another person might have baby and can't currently afford hoggies. But they are going to work next week. So they have want and not income. Are you understanding? When you have a product, you must analyze the future market of the product. Now, some people no realize that, like, for example, Sting. We never buy them time. When Sting used to keep, the greatest thing for a 15-year-old of him, mother said, so you can go. I was like, can I go to Sting every year? Because you know your life at risk. But your man, I really want to go till you're big enough to run. <laughs> and every year, till me at 16. I mean, I observe now, who wants to Sting? So Sting, if Sting, they only realize so, the new people not interested in that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Then that stops thing long time. Because thing is really my age group kind of thing. Me now, I'm too old for this thing. Because I can't stand up for five hours. By the time I stand up for half hours, I back my knee. Start yeah. So, I watch it on TV. So, the product should have evolved to facilitate me. Because at the end of the day, the people who are come behind me, not interested in thing. 
them want go more party like we call it sound like live show not as popular as it used to be clash not as popular as it used to be in fact the new clash is to actually fight <laughs> if a man say yo you know you say um this and this man and this man are war it's literal you know you say vendetta and and family are war it's guns in our time, being man and bounty war is sound like every day you could listen to the radio to who for song come out. No, them they not sing about one another. They don't say, boy, this is me all right. They're PhD. Like, what? <laughs> no, no, it's a song you must sing. It's not a PhD. Right? So the whole thing different. If you don't understand future demand, your product will be in problem. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. So marketing management, therefore, is the art and science of choosing target markets and building profitable relationships with them. You have to choose what customer will you serve and how can we best serve those customers. How do we choose that? Market segmentation. It refers to dividing markets into segments of customers. Now, everybody don't want the same thing. So therefore, those people who try to give one product to everybody usually fail. Because everybody don't want the same thing. So if you're everything to everyone, then you're nothing to no one. So you have to decide here, man. You have to keep a party. Who is this party for? It can't be for everybody because everybody don't like the same party. As I said, if you have to keep a party and you have um, uptown people and downtown people, then somebody has to say the selector flap. Are you understanding? When I was at campus, when I was hard chairman, I keep a party called schizophrenia. People all this have a thing called final fit. They still have final fit. Right, right, and I was all chairman. I'll keep a party named Schizophrenia with two dance floors. So one was uptown and one was downtown. And you could have walked to where you want and anti. But unless you can do that, you're likely not going to be able to satisfy everybody. Are you understanding what? Hotel rooms for business travel had to increase in size. Why? Because women start to travel. See, once upon a time, women never did a business travel because they never used to work. Women don't know how. Life has changed. You see in the classroom now, 10 men and 55 women. No, no, life has changed. But there's a time where every business traveler was almost a man, almost a, automatic 60s, 70s, women stay home. Are you understand? Coming in the 80s, 90s, now when women start to cover place and they travel now, the hotel room have to change. Why it have to change? One, the woman have to stay in her room more than the man. She perceived more risk in a new place than a man. So a man got to a new place and say, yo, where's the bar, where's the dish? She said, I'm not going to wait, because next thing them come trouble me. <laughs> Are you understanding? She stay more time on the bed to prepare. It was more meticulous. An average men not prepare as much as women. She go and press her clothes. If me got farin and it crush up itself, it's sweet business. It was pressed before it got to farin. <laughs> but she go and press and she go and carry extra clothes to hang up in her, in her closet. I don't need a closet because I carry one pants and three shirts. It's and business that. So the difference between how men and women, well, used to act, and men act like women, women act like men. But there was a time that there was a difference between how men and women acted. And so hotel room have changed because women wanted more space. Blow dry and all them things that to be a part of the thing. She want to take a bubble bath, we just want to take a shower. Different things used to happen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So therefore, you want to be a hotel now, you have to know who you are trying to satisfy. Everybody understand? Oh, I have a family hotel, but I also want to facilitate me nude people. Like, what? <laughs> then all the nude part, I got to work with the family part. You just can't work. So that's why you have to know, understand segments. Are you understanding? You don't carry your child to eat on his in kiddie's school? <laughs> like, what do you mean by what? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you love naked, but we don't really know about <laughs> Like, daddy, what's that? I don't know, son. <laughs> just, just move along. So within these segments, and we have to learn more about that soon, you have to know target one of the segments. For example, we have a company, we sell egg, right? So I sell egg, I crack it up, put it in a bucket, I put it in a bucket, and sell it. But I don't really sell regular people. Because that's a segment. Custom, consumers, the final user of the product is a consumer. As versus business, a man who has an add value. We don't sell consumers, we only sell business. So for example, you ever eat a kiss cake before? If you eat a kiss cake, you eat my egg. Because I mean sell kiss cake. Uh, you know if you talk to a rum cake, if you eat sandals, if you eat Marriott, if you eat um, Bayer Principe, if you eat Hilton, 
Yeah, a local money I come. But I'm just saying that I sell the business. Why I don't sell regular people? It costs more to sell regular people. When we call um, buyer, you want some egg? Yes, send me 20 cases. 20 cases is 20 times 360 eggs. Now, which man I go buy 20 times 360 eggs? They have to get 3,000 people. So I have to advertise on TV. I have to have it in a 20 different supermarket. I have to have truck to deliver it on time. So therefore, that's too expensive. I can't bother with it. When the company grew up money now, I might try it. But I don't currently sell it to regular people. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So I choose to target businesses. You can choose to target somebody else. Right? So you have an urgency, so you can choose to target who the brains. That means if a man or a girl want brains, them say, yo, know what? This are the brains place. But you choose to do everything and then your place is a nothing place. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you have a coffee shop, you can choose to do healthy food. That person say, yo, more healthy food, that's the healthy food place. Like if you say, yo, more fried chicken, KFC is just there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Or Popeyes. Anybody eat Popeyes? I've never seen nobody eat Popeyes. You can judge Popeyes see by the rubbish on the road. I've never seen Popeyes rubbish. Everybody ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> Unless Popeyes are walking and pick up it rubbish, but I've never seen it. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, people buy Popeyes are clean. So three people buy Popeyes. You only have three clean people. Nobody tell me. It says more what? So uptown people not throw the rubbish on the road? Oh yeah, I said I go uptown, so that's why I'm in a scene. If you go uptown, for the road, you see? So give me the situation where they want to go to Papa. If they probably want pies, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, I don't know if I right? So anyway, demarketing now. There are reasons why you might not want somebody to buy your product. Now that sounds confusing to most people because you want to sell everybody will want to buy. But there was a time that there was a champion that said puff enough to buy them champagne. And remember, I never bought them champagne. There was a time where, when MTV and everything was there, right? Puffy them used to come out with champagne. I don't remember the name of the champagne. And the people, Crystal, and the people come and say, yo, stop drinking my champagne. And Puffy's like, oh yeah, I say, 20 of them and me drink a day. And my mama said, yeah, but you have 500 white men who drink one a day. That's it, they don't want no ghetto liquor. So you come and get up my liquor now, and me now get to sell 500 and you only buy 20. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Say, one, get rid of Puffy. Everybody understand what I'm saying? All right. You know, so the bank now, you have to go to the ATM, them charge you for, 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 for come at the teller and all kind of something. And people say, why the bank so wicked? They're not really wicked. Block pocket people like myself always want to go to bank and I check up the money and money not in there. <laughs> and then we are discussing. I have to take up time, I have to take up teller space, I have to make people disappointed. So when we go back now, how much money may I have? You have 320 dollars. 320 dollars? So how oh, many have 700? We have 700. And then check it now, check it back. And you talk, and you talk, and you talk. Right? And so the bank now want that. So the bank now start to demarket. Say, yo, you go outside where we use that. Because you yeah, use up 50 dollars worth of space here. Look at 300 dollars for me. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? So, but you think the man will want 3 million dollars to use ATM? First thing you know, you can drop 50,000 dollars at any given time. Oh, like that, you know that ATM. You know that ATM. <laughs> so him still come in. But uh, what is $20 to him to pay? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the banker tried the market. That's why I see the bank of uh, uh, old people lying. You never say to yourself, like sometimes when a bad man and I say, you know, all the old people lying. That's because they know so they might take a little longer. So they might make old people wait for old people. <laughs> Cause they understand the mean and I lie now. I mean I say, yo, you know from when she did, they say, yeah, but they lie now. Like, yeah, they are 36 and I lie. And I see somebody I take like. You just get stressed out like, yo, I, I know you next year, but you just want it over you. Right. So these are things now, sometimes you have to get rid of some people. Are you understand? You have to be market. But most Jamaicans want to sell to everybody as much as you can sell. And that often don't work out. Are you understand? There's a time you have a car in your mom. Escalade. And Escalade was supposed to be a jugsman car. Like any time escalate, a man police or escalate, he's going to stop you. So therefore, regular people like me, even if we like escalate, now nah, go back, because we just don't want to be harassed as a jobsman. 
So escalate to you, we're gonna start make pink hair and change up the color when you're so manly. And then pink became pimp and it just never worked for escalate. <laughs> are, are you understanding? What I'm so therefore there are reasons why people will try to get rid of certain people. So once you decide your target market, you're going to make a value proposition. The set of benefits or value a company proposes to deliver to a customer to satisfy their needs. So when you hear water, it makes a value proposition. It can quench your thirst. You ever hear about Gatorade? What Gatorade say? Say, yo, when you do any exercise, it's going to replenish your thing. So all if you have to do two apart together, where you want? <laughs> no, why can't you cool it? Because Gatorade tell you, say, yo, I eat this. No, when you eat a dinner, you don't want Gatorade. No, not just a Gatorade could be dinner drink. There is no way disqualify Gatorade from being a regular dinner drink, you know. But Gatorade don't tell us that we are the sport drink. Are you understanding us? You have this little athletics thing where, them have, um, where everybody dress up and buy new clothes to go. What name again? It keep out a new Kingston. And them run like 5K. Sigma, right? Oh, I don't know where I'm going, right? The Sigma, you know, 90% of who are going to never run in them life, you know. It's just a fashion statement, you know? <laughs> yes, I am. Yo, I go sing, I go sing, I want a new shoe. Like, what? Where was a new shoe to run? I never heard of that in my life. Right? So, let me go to the Sigma thing. Now, what everybody I carry? I'm going to carry a Gatorade. Yeah, man, I'm going to run, I'm going to drink this. <laughs> you understand? Now, man, let me know. I'm going to get a Gatorade back and mix some Chaka Berry Finch tonight. And I walk in the street. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know me, I'll get some of my money, right? <laughs> but but, but that, that's how it is. So let's check out the situation now. You have to make this value proposition. Your product must be a value to somebody. When me call a man and say, yo, you want some egg? And he must say, why would I want egg? I, I, I buy egg already. I say, yeah, but you don't have to crack this one. <laughs> Convenient. That's my value proposition. Then we start to say to him, yeah, but suppose one spoil. If I crack a spoil, egg and say, stink up your place? No, that. I'll do that for you. I'll take out the stink one. Then he must say, yeah, yeah, but, he must say, yeah, but general, tell me that joke. Sometimes I'm teeth the egg in the dark. Yo, them can't teeth. I walk with that egg. Yeah, you have to see a continual game of thing to say, this is why you buy mine. Are you understanding? So when you are selling something, what is your value proposition? What make a man should buy from you and not from the other person? So one time you used to buy a shop. We don't know what shop is, right? We used to buy a shop. Why you buy a shop? Why? We don't know about shop. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. When, when you go to shop, you buy a quarter of bread. That's why we never buy a supermarket. Because the bread man is selling me quarter, supermarket not selling me no quarter. So that is a value proposition. You can get it in an affordable and convenient package. Quarter. Are you understanding? Man? So it don't mean for them to sell something different. All right, you eat flour? Yeah? You can make dumplings? Don't tell them that. No, everybody do that. But eat flour. You ever go on a flour means go buy? Why? Because they sell a hundred pounds, you don't need a hundred pounds floor. <laughs> so the valid proposition of the supermarket is, I will give you in a one pound, in go buy the hundred pound and cut it down to one pound and say, here's a convenient. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. So when you want to make a valid proposition, you have to say to yourself, what is going to make this make a man better off? No, in today's day, convenience is the greatest value proposition. Why all of us have a cell phone? Convenience, we can talk with more. I used to have to walk on my yard and talk. No, we can talk as I want. That's convenience. You look on everything we offer convenience. It is the number one selling product. When you sit down in this class, keep on thinking, what can I make more convenient? And then you will make millions and trillions of dollars. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. So now, you have some methods, some strategies, some approaches to marketing, some paradigms to marketing. And these approaches start with what we call the production concept. Now the production concept says that if I can become efficient, yes, if I can make a product affordable and available, then people will buy it. Do you agree with that? Put up your hand if you agree. If I can make a product affordable and available, people will buy it. So all I have to do is focus on being efficient at making my product so that it can become cheap and not. Talk to me. Nobody not agree? You agree? All right. May I ask a question now? How much people have a paper made pen? We call them boy blue. You know the blue paper made pen? 
I want to treat that feet. Yeah. Yeah, see that? Yeah. I want to treat like that. About five pounds. So most people know what is available and affordable because that is the cheapest pen and it sells everywhere. All madmen sell them pen then. <laughs> Where by? Don't have a madman. No? <laughs> everywhere sell it. <laughs> eh? Yeah, but see some people sell like, uh, see, you should never know. So whenever you get it from, just appear like people have made us broken up people out and give them a book. <laughs> but if you take all the real situation, it is available. It is affordable. Yet most of them don't have it. Some of them have pen have rubber grip because it makes them think that nobody knows what right. Some of them have pen have glitter. Sometimes they mark some paper, it smells sweet like it has no more marks. <laughs> <laughs> and they write out Merry Christmas, sir, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get look a bit here. <laughs> right? So, all kind of pen, some of them have pen have multicolor. So, the reality is, Affordability is not the only consideration, nor is availability. Are you understand? That's a product concept. So a next man comes and say, yo, production concept. A next man comes and say, yo, that's a foolishness. Because most people don't have no paper made pen. Most people have stylish pen. So therefore, we have to focus on the quality. And we have to focus on the offerings. And we have to make sure say, it is the best, best offering, the best quality that ever exists. And everybody has to buy it at that time. Oh, my son. Who agree with that? That the quality and the offerings and turn up the, the features and everybody go want it. Huh? Like iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Everybody want it. True. All right. May I come to you now? iPhone girl. Talk to me now. You ever put up a curtain? Like you change up your house for Christmas. You put up a curtain. All right, and you come to and say, yo, don't know, I put a curtain on the wall, but I don't have no hole, not you? Mm -hmm. All right, so you want a hole now to put up a curtain. So, what are you going to buy if you put up the curtain? Put up the curtain. You buy a drill, you buy a drill. Because you can't go far now with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, some people we don't even know about. Like, no, sir, you have something with us to strip, I right? don't mash up your wall. No, I don't know about that. You buy a drill. All right? If you come from the gate, you get a stone and a nail, you knock it in, you just say, understand? Piece of the wall chip out, you just go by with the curtain. Like, you know, like. <laughs> okay, right? Boom. So you go buy a drill. So you go buy this drill now, yeah? And a man come and say, um, I need a drill um, for just put a wall up, put up my curtain. And he say, I have the best drill. It have hands free. It have infrared. It have everything. You want a drill, eh? Why you not put up a curtain? Like, what am I doing? With a hands-free drill first, how oh, is it hands-free? <laughs> like, 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 I don't understand what you're saying. I understand. But all these features, maybe if it's a care punter, we don't buy this drill. But I'm not going to use it again. Stop stressing me out. Give me the cheapest drill where you have. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So all these features don't mean nothing. Because the features might become too expensive. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the, you see, that's a part of marketing, my yoga. You might think that the person wants a drill, you know. But the person wants a drill. They thank you very much. They only want a hole. So because they only want a hole, anybody can give them a whole vest. <laughs> <laughs> Your minds are so smutty. The next one now come and say, yo, so it's not just affordability and it's not just availability. Carry back your mind to what I told you was value. <laughs> if it was only features, then it would have only been the benefit portion. If it was only affordability, that would only be the outlay portion. So therefore, value is not based on only of the two. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the next one come and say, we're going to do the selling concept. Is the idea that consumers will not buy enough of a firm's product unless it undertakes large-scale promotion and selling. Who agree with that? Like, you just push it on them, push it on them till them buy. Who agree? Nobody? Nobody? You ever watch, like, something on TV? When the man has said something, like he said, um, do you want a knife that can cut a piece of nail? <laughs> Yo! You never see it? 
<laughs> man said, if it's so sharp, look at this thing. <laughs> and it cut the nail, I said. No, I don't know why I was so intrigued, because I don't really cut nail. <laughs> but I'm like, this knife, here's the knife. <laughs> and then it comes and says, look at this to me. And I just drop it out of the sky, and I just drop on the knife and cut the knife too. So <laughs> Alright. Now the man have me, you know, have me attention. And then he said, not only do you get this knife, you will get this now. He said, I'm like, let's go. Right. I'm continuing, I'm continuing. Until the end of 24 nights. And he said, you get all 24 nights for just 19.99. Free delivery if you call before. You say, we eat. My car. That's the selling concept. Come and call you. Yo, let's do this. Him send the knife them now. Now you know Jamaica people only need one knife. You come and take up the knife and cut the bread. Come and then you take out the tea and milk. <laughs> Open it. Then you come and screw up the door. Only one knife. The same knife is everything. Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So Jamaica people need one knife. You take the same knife go outside and plant piece of car. Right? Right? And also Jamaica people stay, right? Um, so, how do I feel now about having 24 nights? I feel disappointed. I feel stressed out. I feel like I'm wasting money. Because 1999 is good for 24 nights, but we only need one night. We should only spend 199. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So that is what the selling concept. It only carries to the, to the table, but it don't keep it here. You understand? One time Jamaica, you have a next thing now. What do you mean to do like the same foreign thing? I mean, I watch it and him say, Ab King Pro. We don't have a them time. Like if you use it, you all get abs. I say, yo, first thing, I be a pretty girl, I got the man, and I say, oh, me can get some of them girl. And the man I say, yeah, look at my abs. And the man abs look thick. I mean, I say, me I get some of that. The first time I come and do two crunch out of it, I'm a back neck. I say, no, no, I don't want to have people. No, every time you see it on their bed, all your feet. You feel like you're wasting money. You feel disappointed. Are you understanding? That's the selling concept. Everybody understand? So the selling concept don't work because marketing is a relationship. And a relationship can only come if you're satisfied. So therefore, you, you eat at the station. <laughs> Next time the man comes and sell uh, something different, you say, yo, lock up this kind of man. <laughs> Are you understanding? So therefore, you have to understand that the selling concept now and work. But most times Jamaican companies have that. They must have push it for you and push it for you and push it for you. And you might you, you ever see some people when they go to a gas station, worse they know me. Like the worst thing is when people know you because they're not stopping. Mr. Crawford, they can't buy one of them from me. Then she started, Mr. Crawford, they're broken and you know. And then you know all oh, they make you have to buy now, they tell us they're my PMP. Let me have PMP. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I really know why you're not voting next time. So, <laughs> but they not stop. And then push it now, you don't want it. But if they push it long enough. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You take it. But how you feel now? The next time you see the gas station, you drive past it. I'm not stopping. I'm not buying nothing. I'm not just gas more. You understand? You're out of gas. You have to walk or buy gas on the road. But you're not busy. Everybody understand what I'm saying? That is the selling concept. It don't work. So I'm a brilliant genius come up now and say, yo, no. There's a marketing concept. It is that achieving the goals of the organization depends, first of all, on knowing the needs. What's needs? Over here, so I get zero. Sit up for the privation. And once, how you express the needs based on your socialization. Of the target market, the segment which you choose, and delivering the desired satisfaction, actual greater than expected, it looks like a C class. Better than competitors do. So the first thing is that you have to understand what they want, understand how they're socialized, understand what they're feeling deprived of, because you cannot be deprived and feel deprived enough. You can't be around 100 people and feel lonely enough. Are you understanding? You can't be in a relationship and hate the person. You know? So when you go home, you feel well stressed out, you don't even want to go yard. Boss, I say, um, it's 9.30 p.m. No, boss, I'm good. I'll work. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I want this company to make some profit. <laughs> just don't go. So therefore, you check out this whole situation. The man say, you have to find out what they want. You have to give it to them. And you have to give it to them better than the competition. He said, that is the marketing concept. It is the marketing concept that makes... Yo, it's, if your girlfriend have a guy with like her and he talk to her, don't cuss her. Because you cuss her now, she will start saying, yo, I can't bother. You have to be a stress, you must stress me out. And then she will talk to the youth. And them there in a real life, and you know, I said, Jano, I better make it easy. You have to say, that is my competition. What you want, baby? <laughs> what are you feeling deprived of? <laughs> she said, oh, I, I'm deprived of time. You're not spending no time with me. Okay, let's do this. How do you want to spend time? Based on how to socialize, you want to go beach. Let's do this, okay? We're going to beach Saturday and Sunday. That's how I do right? So, therefore, you're going to, right? Because she's a target, right? So, you're going Saturday and Sunday, right? No, when you go to the beach, you know the sun is on you. Let me just rub it down with some of this suntan lotion because that is the desired satisfaction. Because I don't just swim, she wants to swim. At times, she wants, you know what I mean? You're going to go and say, let's, let me bury you in the sand. Let's do it, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to have it, yeah, yeah, mine, right? Because if you just step on the beat and you see some man play domino, he say, I'm so come here, and you go play domino. That's not the desired satisfaction. Are you understanding that? And when you go home now, you see her, it's up in the corner of the bed, and she had to send a little message, and you know in time, they must send a message, you see them kind of turn so you don't know what going on. You just take up your phone, you don't say, who that? You just take up your phone and start sending two message too. Like, let's do this, and we see who a message. Are you understanding that? So, you have to know, understand. So when the competition comes, the aim is not to cost. It's like when a man says, yo, when you are MP and the people are vexed, and I say, uh, education and thing, I can't cost a man if you don't buy my product. It's either it's not a good product or it's not a good sale. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So if Pepsi comes and says, why are you drinking Coca-Cola? Me eat you. You don't drink Coca-Cola. You'll be like, Pepsi, what's wrong with you too? <laughs> Are you understanding? So Pepsi, you have to say, Pepsi is better than Coca-Cola. And if it is actually better, convince you that it's true. Are you understanding? So when you carry a beach and cover up, when you might ask her, say, um, yeah, yeah, you know, one day we can go and have a drink, she'll be like, why would I want to go to drink? And I was just under the sun, cover up, and he was making breasts and everything. And yeah, it was, it was, it was a bomb. Are you understanding? Everybody understand? All right, so then next man now, can you know you have some people who just never satisfied? He come and say, no, you can't just find out what people want and give it to them. Suppose it's not good for them. Suppose a diabetic come to you and say, yo, I want a cake. Like, what? No, you can't want a cake, you have diabetes. No, suppose your company say, yo, take the cake here, brother. They must say, that's a bad company. So they come and say, you have a responsibility to not only give them what they want, but to give them what's good for them. What is in their benefit for the long run? What is in their interest? So it is societal marketing and you know, say so you can't sell picnic cigarette. Now when we used to look like a group, you used to have a cigarette bubble gum. And then body cut him say, right now you're trained picnic for one smoke. And then in the long run you might catch cancer and I'm dead. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? So therefore you, you, you ban liquor because it's no good for you. So all these things you now must say societal marketing is the marketing concept taking a step further with social responsibility. Are you understanding? Everybody understand? <clears throat> so therefore, we have this ideology, we have this mentality, we have this approach. Which approach we have? Which approach we are taking? Societal marketing? Some people where say, yo, sir, they can do it if they want to. We are taking marketing where you say, right? So we are taking societal marketing. We are, we are good for them, right? Because if you take the um, regular marketing, and people start dead from cancer. Like, look what's happening with cigarettes now. They're under pressure. Every day they want to ban them, everything. So the long term, I bet a cigarette they try to do some local thing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Cool. So we come now to the point where we say, all right, how are we going to achieve this relationship? Because when you're going in a relationship with you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend, ladies, you have certain tools where you carry. Gentlemen, you have certain tools where you carry to the relationship. You have to focus on those tools. It's like, for example, if a girl see me and say, you know, I'm so attracted to your mind. Me and her now, they become, you know, really thought, sensible thing 90% of the time. The people, they might say, you know, the economy needs to improve. <laughs> no. 
Kau tak boleh kau TV misal tak aku rambut jaga kau buat barang-barang dan suap lah Ya So dia pun dia tak ketemu main dia kalau left Kau tak boleh kau I don't know which madman do that, but you don't carry that to the relationship. But oh, you know, you're like safe on TV and say, yo, when you on TV you talk and it makes sense and think I'm so attracted to your mind right now. I'm like, this girl, you're crazy, you know what I mean? I mean who attracted to people's mind? What are we going to do? Let's like, let's like that. Like. <laughs> so therefore, you have certain tools where you carry. So therefore, when you don't like my girl, she will laugh. Like, come and just talk something and she laugh and she find it funny. That's my local tool. Then, Remember, look at the thing and my ambitious and if I go somewhere with me park near the gate, that's my two. Don't feel so she want to park with you down at the parking lot and walk in her spike hill boot. She feels very good to have me and her there when I park at the gate. She's like, thank God, my dear. <laughs> because I couldn't bother with the stress in the mud. There's some other hot girl in the mud, they boot a papa and they're like, I wish they had been on the day. Because I'm right at the gate. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So there are tools that you can. You focus on those tools. So marketing is saying to themselves now, we have an idea, we want to give people what they want within the context of what's in their interest. What are the tools that I have to use? And the tools that they have to use is what you call the four P's. It is the price, the product, the promotion, and the place. Now, the place is actually the distribution. But it wouldn't sound good if I say 3 P and a D. <laughs> the 3 P and a D of marketing, everybody be like, no, marketing even over. Are you understanding? So place is distribution. Oh, you get the product from your place to the consumer. The promotion is how you get the person to know about the product, or you get the person to want the product, or you get the person to desire the product. The product is all the things that combined to make this product. And then now the price is how much you have a charge for this product. Now, if you analyze everything, Price is the only aspect of the four P's we make revenue. Every other one is a cost. So price is the last one where we have a set. Because marketing is what? Profitable relationship. How are you going to make a profit? If revenue greater than expenses. So I can't set my revenue target until I know my expenses. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So we're going to have this marketing program now that are going to come together and everything must work together. What do you say, Chris? Everything must work together. You understand that? So when your product, for example, you ever see Benz that sell in our backyard? <laughs> Benz make a building with AC. But Suzuki Swift go on the back and buy it. So Benz distribution of a match Benz. Are you understanding? Everybody understand? If you are this type of product, it have a match. Uh, no, 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 The price have a match. Benz, $500. Nobody know one that. Why you need for 500 No, Benz, that is not IN, that's not luxury. But how much you make a Benz, we don't know. But it just have a deal because it's Benz. Are you understanding? The promotion have a match. When you see a Benz promotion, you can't look pop them. Are, are you understanding? ATI, you ever see ATI promote? You ever see when the man them take um, flour and rub on the back of the post and put on the wall? You ever see ATI promote like that? Cause that don't match ATI. ATI, if you buy a billboard, you think ATI wouldn't want to save some money and put up some of them flour or something. Eh? But the promotion don't match the product. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Everybody understand? Cool. <clears throat> so, throughout the life now, you want to know what the lifetime value of your client is. Me have a client. They make a complaint. They say, I don't like how the egg look. And I'm saying to them, because the egg is not going to be the same yellow every time. There's sometimes the yolk lighter yellow sometimes, and the product is going to look like the yolk. I'm saying, we still don't like it. All right, I take it back. I lose some money. But at the end of the day, I expect my son to come sell them. That's a lifetime value. So what is a hundred thousand? If you're not gonna make hundreds of millions over the years and years and years. Are you understanding that? So when you look at the lifetime value of a customer, sometimes you realize you can lose dollar because you're gonna make fifty dollars. But if you look at the daily value, then you can't lose dollar because dollar is a dollar. Are you understanding that? So the lifetime value calls for us now to have relationship management, customer relationship management, manage the relationship. Just like boyfriend and girlfriend, you have to manage the relationship. If you don't manage the relationship, then over time it's going to mash up. Things are going to change, people change, 
um, realities change and it mash up. When you reach my age, I realize that none of your relationship is excited like when you say that you win. Because when you say you win, you never have no responsibility. Like, baby, let's go to the beach. It's Monday, so you can bond class. Baby, let's go to the beach. It's Monday. No, you cannot bond work because this mortgage needs to be paid. <laughs> Are you understand? So you're going to go in a different reality. And you're going to find something not as exciting. That's why if you can't find one from now, just go on there with them until you're old. Because then you're going to say, maybe it's exciting. Because when you find one new one, you're not that exciting. Okay, yeah. You understand? You reach up, you want to sleep. Because you walk all day. You understand? Now you come class with three hours and then you're just chilling, you're excited, you're energetic. It's a different life. See? So, therefore, when you check out the situation, you have to manage relationship. Now, different relationship, get different management. My sister doesn't get managed like my girlfriend. It's a different level of management. Oh, you don't call me. I want to tell you. I eat that too much time if I call you. You're my sister. Girlfriend, oh, you don't call me. Sorry, I was planning to call you, but um, I, I just got caught up. I didn't even have a plan in your office. Yes. All right, so you don't get my call. I don't know what I'm telling you. Didn't say. So, I tell you, show you the WhatsApp thing below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to manage the relationship. Everybody understand? If you're Bridget, you have to manage that relationship as a Bridget. Because you can't always want and never can give. You have some people ever broke and one time you broke and can't let. You have to start freedom. So therefore, you have customers and you manage the relationship. You manage your customer relationship. So the last time now, we come to call one of my customers and say, yo, realize you buy as much as you used to. Then I say, yo, you know, say, the demand kind of drop. He say, all right, now I'll give you 500000 dollars to do a promotion. He's like, yo, the money a partner. The money I want my thing to sell. But if you think sell mine sell. Are you understanding? So that's why sometimes Digicel say, hey, it's some free credit, yeah? That's managing the relationship. You're like, yo, Digicel had the best free weekend. I mean, if you tell him, I call everybody, right? But then over a lifetime, Digicel gets 50 million times that from you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes? Over here? Good. So then go through these relationship management. Now, if somebody buy five, you're going to manage the relationship different than if somebody buy 500. The customer perceived value is the difference between total customer value and total customer cost. So to the business, what is the value of this customer is the difference between how much we can make from him and how much it costs to service him. Now, there might be a particular person where you can make no from, but the servicing of that person is too great. So it really not no value. Are you understanding? Now, most of us only look for how much money we can make from them. And we never ever focus on how much they cost. So let's say a man calls and says, Hello, Mr. Crawford, I want to deliver some egg to Westmoreland. How much egg you want? All right, I want 10 cases. All right, we can make 100 grand from the 10 cases there. All right, how much we chuck? How much we carry go down there? 120 grand. <laughs> the woman says, I lose 20 grand. So it costs too much to service him. If you want this 100 grand, here, are you understanding what I'm saying? It costs too much to service that client. So you're in a taxi, and a man says, hello, um, on time, I'd like a taxi to go to Barnett Street. Where's Barnett Street? Oh, curious. Um, But where are you now? I'm in Otrius, and I want to go to Barnett Street, but I'm in Kingston. Oh, but still, come drive to Otrius, and then carry me. <laughs> now, you carry me for $500. How much it costs if you drive to Otrius? It's not sufficient. So the value is this. You see, a lot of times we ignore that. What it costs to service the person. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You say, look at you girls on the like, and you say, I like the youth, yeah? and then every day I'm wanted on a bowl, and then you drop out of school. It's too much to service it. So you don't say, okay, I'm cool, but it's, the value is too. Uh, anything where you go in, uh, what you get must be greater than what it costs to go into it. Otherwise, you're making a loss. You come here, if you left your car, make back your school fee, find somewhere else. No, you're going to make back your school fee. But most of us stress out, but we're not all right. Most people that I know are all right, who went to school with me. Some they are fine. So, but they're all right. And don't be nobody tell them they can't go fine. The NID Jamaica people love remittance, but they don't love migration. It confuses me. Oh, yeah, get remittance if nobody migrates. So every day we praise remittance and then we cause migrate. If you know how to work at Jamaica, take away your local cell. Go to Fari. If you make enough money, you come back and build a house down a mandible like the rest of them. And live. I mean, I don't know. One of us there stretch out food alone and call me. I'm not laughing. But you ever see a food alone call somebody and then stress out. And then say, why are you calling me? 
Where we go? Just like my God. Right? So nobody make that reach, right? I'm going to make some money and come back. Customer satisfaction, well, really. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm not talking about serious things. I'm not laughing. Now, you might have a basic relationship with a customer, or you might have a full relationship. Because I supply businesses, I have mostly full relationship because I'm buying up. I can't afford to lose one client because of 100 kids. Now, if you only buy 100 of credit, that's a basic relationship. You just say, now if you know you're not a friend, you're not nothing at all. Are you understand? But if you have spent 400,000 francs, phone bill, like for example, my light bill, I, and JPS have a, a person who represent me, I have a client for it. Because my factory light bill I. It's a cloud for everything I write very rare, I have a problem, I call him. That's a full relationship. But my house light bill I like 15,000, they don't business bother. You have to go to customer care, dial 7 if you have a problem, and then dial 9 if you have another problem. You have to just continue dialing until you're fed up and just feeding it. That is how they work. You never realize that. So that is a, a basic relationship. Are you understanding the difference? Now, in your life, you have some of that. You have a full relationship. I have a basic relationship. Don't confuse a basic relationship and spend enough time on it like it's a full relationship. And don't use a full relationship and spend so little time like it's a basic relationship. Marketing is just like relationship. Are you understanding that? Look at this. You understand? All right. Partner relationship management. It involves working closely with partners in other company departments and outside the company to jointly bring greater value to the customer. You have to learn this in a local minute. But I buy eggs from farmers. I have my own farm too, but I buy from farmers as well. You think that if the farmers tell me, say, I'm an egg this week, my client business bought it? Because he never business bought a farmer, he wants egg. So if you get him in 100 case, somehow, somewhere, we have a lay some, whatever, go tea something. Like this. You do what you have to do. I want my egg. Are you understanding? So me, have to now maintain a relationship between those who supply me egg so that I can always feel confident that me ever have egg to supply my people. If me not get no egg to supply my people, then my people now will stop by from me. Are you understanding? So there is also a relationship to be managed with the partners that come together to supply. There's a relationship to be managed with the man who fix the machine because if it match down, we need him to come right now. There's a relationship to manage with the workers because they need to do the right thing. There's a relationship to manage with the people clean down the place because we need the place to be healthy. All of those relationships, we have to manage. So if we have a birthday party, they are going to be invited. But if we never have this mood invite them, you never know them like that. Yeah, are, are, are you understand that? Then they will buy full feed and pan and give them for free, like in some pan, yeah? Take some pan. That's the relationship you have to manage. The person at the partner in my company and say, yo, what are you doing the pan them for? And I say, yo, you have to make sure, say, when the next man go to him and say, me give a dollar more for the egg, he say, no, me have to give crap for the egg. Are you understanding that? That's relationship management. When you have your shop, the people come by at the shop, they always want to come to your shop. Them to feel a connection to Miss Matty. So one day when you go down there and you say, Miss Matty, give me some chicken back. And she say, no, I'm going to throw in two pieces of wing in it. But I don't know. He has a John, no, Miss Matty, cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right beside you know, John Brown with him bad mindset, come out in the shop, to Miss Matty and get a look of money. You walk past John Brown's shop and go on to Miss Matty's shop because you have a relationship. Are you understanding, man? You move from Kingston and go on to Portmore, but you're here just as a cool. That you still drive back to Kingston. That's relationship. So when a man buy from me, he buy 120 kids. And I realize that the product must have spoiled by now because it's out of 30 days. And I call him and say, how much product you have left? I say, I have 40 buckets. 40 buckets is 400,000 dollars to me now. I say, send back them. Because the man who did make the decision, the more I like it, the owner. I say, look at the man where I work. No, I'm going to explain to him that it's 400,000 dollars away. He can't explain that to him. So when we take back that now, we lose 400,000, but if any man to go sell Eggie, man call me, yo, Crawford, some man there, but we want to sell Eggie now. Maybe tell you, come back here quick. Come here, my brethren. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If any issue with him, call me and say, yo, you know, some open one of them, and he not look so good. Come look on it. No, if me and him are afraid, he say, I want this. So I can talk to you like this. <laughs> Are you understanding? There's a difference. And that's why not only know the difference to being a friend. Being a friend doesn't mean you don't have the same opinion. You mean the angry different. In a WhatsApp group where your friends say something fool, you just come out and go to an private place. Yo, dog, oh yeah, say, say I'm mad this that. Call your friend. 
Another person, I'm in a business boy, he's in this group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I, I understand. That's, that's, that, that's. So in marketing, it is to make the person react different even though your opinion is the same. Are, 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 you, are you understanding? Customer loyalty. The customer lifetime value is the value of the entire stream of purchases that the customer would make over a lifetime of patronage. For example, you don't have a staff a degree. That doesn't make sense anymore. You don't have to do something else. You will want, if you do a master's, you will do it here. Because we will lose value if you do a master's somewhere else. So you will want you to enjoy this experience so much to learn so much that when you don't you want to do a master's here. Like sometimes when we don't teach someone, you never say, oh, I'm going to switch more to marketing. Come and say, yo, I'm going to enter the class and yo. And then I come and say, Crawford, what else to teach? I'm going to say, I'm not going to teach it. I'm going to run the country later, right? And then we'll switch it. But at the end of the day, your experience, so you will want others experience to come to master's. And then they say, okay, I want to do a PhD. You will want you to come here and come do it. And they are in a country and say, yo, I want some research done. You will want to say, yo, you will, can you do the research? You will want every time you spend money where university involved is with them. That's the lifetime value. Are you understanding? So you will don't want or shouldn't want to charge you so much that you vex with you if you the rest of your life. Because then you are uh, not make as much. How much is school for you? Know, right? Send it out. How much? How much is school? Three or Jack? Yeah. When I come to school, school be one six of them. <laughs> Sixty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight, school people sixty thousand dollars. Huh? We don't know what happened. I lost life. Customer equity. The customer equity is the total combined customer lifetime value of all the company's customers. So when you sell a company, like Grace sell, right? Grace brand value something because people have a certain equity combined in Grace. Are you understand that? So the machine them value five hundred dollar, but Grace have so much customers like me sell. When I go to the supermarket, I only buy Grace. The only other thing I buy is jam, Eve jam, because Grace jam tastes bad, but Eve jam. But Grace mackerel, Grace everything. I love thin food. My, 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 my palate not really evolved to expensive stuff. <laughs> yeah. But when I go to the supermarket now, Jamaican people are too bra. Yeah, Jamaican people are bra. I'm not looking at it. I say, I go and cough on my feet. You never know the money. I'm looking at it. Some people type, Guinness, and they can't take me to cough on like, why? I, I don't know you, do. <laughs> yeah, but I like this. I said, I know you don't have mockery, I'll be a pussy out of your yard. <laughs> All right, cool. Right? But Grace has a certain equity. And if I buy Grace, I'm going to benefit from what they created, what they developed in equity. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because if we buy Grace, that's still name Grace. Why must we want it named Grace? Come on, the equity. Why do you think flow change from be mobile to every different thing? Because it's not equity. Too much how you accost them and eat them and be something. So they might try to change it up now with that shred of vibration there. Are you, are you understanding man? Why did you say no change? Because them things that we love them. Because them did come and rescue me one night time. Yeah, you understand? Because you never buy them time, but we have one thing in phone box. You don't know, you don't know where the word comes from, you know? The word that comes from when you go out, you put a pen in your pocket with a piece of paper, and you walk with it if a girl that you take her number, and when you go home, you call her. And your mother used to put padlock on the phone box, so you have to press the, the hang up part. If you want to dial 90, press it 9 times. And you call. And then now they have a phone box, you have to buy a phone card and stand up in a line. And when you dip on the phone, a man at Oreo. Yo, dog, yo, be a love, you have to hear what you have said. <laughs> and then you know, have the fridge. You have pay, pay your snake. If the snake could have gone through the screen and you have to say, Oh, no! You have to have a full bag! 
And you used to have to pay for call by the minute. You never know what everything is. Per minute billing. So you have to watch it call like your 59. Hang up, hang up! <laughs> so if you go over 60, the next minute you have to go attack again. Yo, all right, yo, pause in a second. And then, so when Digicel come, we were so happy. Because we would get free up. So Digicel feel like we have an emotional attachment to them. But the man, them know where we used to say them wicked. Like JPS need to change their name, like tomorrow. Like right now. Because Jamaica people just eat JPS no matter what. <laughs> The bill come for five dollars. Five dollars, take it, yes. I should have dollar. <laughs> like JP just cut up the right. <laughs> it, it was in the news last night. You know what? JPS them cut down JPS by two percent. Holy two! <laughs> like they just eat them rubbish cards. <laughs> yes, now, how do you feel this customer equity? First of all, you have to build the right relationship. That means you have to go after the right target and then you have to offer the right products. The right customers involve treating customers assets that need to be managed and maximized. Me I sell hotel now. So me I sell them liquid egg. Right now I buy a machine to sell them boiled egg. Come on, maximize. And then I start selling them French toast. Me I take over breakfast. Then I start take over dessert. Because I want to make one dollar profit. From every tourist that comes to Jamaica, US. 2.7 million tourists come to Jamaica. I want to make one US from every one of them. I make 2.7 million, I just don't see me again. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> like, with a car, I'm not checking, I don't know you. <laughs> right? So the point I'm making is that at the end of the day, I see, I see a break on your business. It sounds simple though, it doesn't make a dollar from every tourist. It doesn't really sound like a difficult time. Them day after five days, I want to make 20 cents a day. So therefore, me want to do something with them I buy every day, which is breakfast and meat every day. So I'm going to eat egg. But no more, I want to take over more and more different things because I want to maximize the customer. He don't have power with me. He don't have buy from me. So I might as well give him some other things. You check it out, I start selling sheep. <laughs> okay, you sheep, let's go. <laughs> Next time, man, call and say, Mr. Crap, you don't have egg here, but we have pain too. You have pain. You just have to try to get it. And that's why you have to maximize the relationship. You have a sister and she know maths. Not just call her and talk to her. Do some maths to maximize the relationship. Different types of customers require different relationship management strategies. Well, anybody have ever been in a relationship, you know that. You ever see some people just like never bridging. More time, the man has been girlfriend, something and nothing and keep, you know. We just stay in those she get flowers. You say, why she get flowers there? I just too think about her to be like, dude, they're making us look bad, dude. Right now, our girls start stress out. I wonder if we love them. You are just me eat it. You know what I'm saying? As the baby I start about you. Fear that next to my girl next. My girl start to say, yo, what about me? I'm like, Man. right then you have to go buy flowers so your money are done. I hate it. Right? But there are different types of people, so the people want different management. You have some people, you ever read this book named Cosmos? You ever read it? Cosmopolitan or something like that. It's the worst book in the history of the world. Because I pay like 10. 10 things your boyfriend wants for you to watch football with him. No, nobody don't want that. Who wants that in the world? She watch football first thing, she never know who she cheer for. She starts chess, yo. She, your team doesn't know, you say, yo, Liverpool, come. No, I don't like Liverpool, because I want the foot look good. Like, come on, come on. You are Manchester. Like what? So all that no goal. When goal it, like what? No, listen, stop. Go away. <laughs> then you know so by then something now she said. Uh, like our like our advertisement. Let me just see what I'm going for the next channel. <laughs> then she yeah, what? Sans it, what's going on? Don't you think it? Uh, you're so you're so spicy. <laughs> then they're like, what? Right? And then you know, say so you move and go to the living room now. By two minutes I them come out, they're like, what are you going? Right? So nobody wants that. But a different kind of guy might like that. He might say, yo, she's interested in that way. No. Me does one the mighty. You understand? See, I'm some bridging, they must share a friend. Me and my girl not share a friend. Your friend is your friend. And my friend is my friend. Because next thing we left now, some of my friends might wonder what they might do. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, dog, I tell you the truth. I prefer for your links to you. I'm kidding. So therefore, different types of customers. 
So you have some customer where you have to constantly a call. Is the product okay? Is this that? Is that that? You have an ear dresser, you have some sister where you have to close to. You have some sister when they come, you have to talk to them about them life. You have some people who don't want to intervene. So when you have an ear dresser now and you come in and say, Oh, is your boyfriend? She's like, No, we're not that close. I mean. <laughs> we have a next one if you don't ask that. She has to say, Yo, you're not know nothing. I wonder if you understand now. So different people, like when we go wash my ear. A three people do my hair now. Come my hair just knows I'm not into the sit down for four hours. That's why it only do once every six months anyway. <laughs> Cause I ain't got no time for this. And when me go wash my hair, I have a towel dry because I can't afford if you have a picture I go take me under one dryer and put it on. <laughs> just that. Uh, now work. It's different. So when me go now, I know I go early because me can't, three people can't wash my hair and not do my hair when somebody is there wait. That other person never said, what is this? <laughs> so if you open 10 o'clock, I have to go 7 a.m. So me can get my quick do up and do my thing and left. Different customer. Now somebody has called her, I said, can I come in 7 a.m.? She's like, no, who's you? Nobody knows who's you. Are, are, are you understanding? Because most of you don't know me here. She has show you over there on TV. I say, yo, big up Pauline. I said, Pauline. I'm going to go for a big CPM like, yo, big up Pauline for me here. Like, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I got that. <laughs> right? But different customers need different relationships. If at any time she says she me can't get three people, I can find somebody else. Are you understanding this? So you have to now learn what that customer needs and how you have to deal with that customer. Alright. <clears throat> time. One o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All right, you not understand so far? Marketing not make sense to you? One o'clock, marketing making sense to you? Are you ready for one o'clock all the time? Marketing not make sense to you? Yeah? So like you can market something? Yeah? Can try. Blue or orange? Yeah? That makes sense? All right. So it's simple common sense. It's just let me put some terms to it now. So therefore now, in your relationship, let me see who I want to talk to. Who I want to talk to? 87. Where are you? Lamar. Lamar. In your relationship. Lamar. <laughs> 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 if not, you're Lamar, no. Lamar, that's in every. That's in every. You have a relationship. You have, you have been in a relationship before. I'm not allowed to think because if you have a relationship, then somebody like you and then no stop. Look by your car, you're there with somebody, right? You have been in a relationship before. Aren't there things outside of your control that affect that relationship? For example, she have some bad mind friend. If your girlfriend ever leave you, it start by our friend saying, yeah, eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything all right till our friend say, you can make him study now, eat that. <laughs> you don't have a control over the thing. Same thing with marketing. There are things outside of the marketer's control that affect the relationship with them customers. Are you understanding them? And they must then now seek to understand how they actually react to that. Because they can't control it. And so that is what we call the market environment. Things outside of the marketing can include actors and forces outside of marketing that affect marketing management's ability to build and maintain successful relationship with the target market. So there are some things will actually act as a deterrent to you build and maintain relationship. For example, if me carry my girl and my mother don't like her, she now get nothing for drink. She got kind and talk to her everything now. But she got dead for thirst. You just work that out and say, okay, mommy don't like this one. If she like her, everything in the fridge, hope it. You want me to make some blended fruit punch? I will buy a banana on the road and come. I understand. No, if your mother don't like her, it's going to affect your ability to build a mental relationship. Even if you decide to say no to mommy, she has to stress you out every day. Your mother don't even like me and everything. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So therefore, that's going to affect relationship. Everybody understand? So there are actors and forces 
outside of marketing that actually affects the ability to do it. Now, these actors are divided into two. The micro environment, you know the micro economics? The micro is close to the firm, within the firm. Things at the, that affect me direct. And the macro environment is things on a broader scale, like economy-wide, or, or, or country-wide, eh? or worldwide. So you have these things on the micro economic environment, sorry, consists of the actors close to the company that affects their ability to serve the customer. The company suppliers, marketing intermediaries, customer markets, competitors, and publics. Let's look, for example, at the suppliers. Where are you in glasses? Huh? You never remember seven I'm glasses? <laughs> huh? I don't say good in him. Come in and read that area. It's a glasses. Hear me? You all get married, right? You get married to John. So, you and John now do the thing and you hire me to bake a cake. When you bake a cup, you don't see a cake. How do you feel? Huh? You feel upset? You come here and say, Dutty Rasta boy, where's the cake? Because <laughs> you know that you're going to come here. Right? I mean, I say, you know, I had a problem because I buy this flour and it had weebling in it and by the time I couldn't get the key. Wait, wait, wait. It says, oh sorry. my God, Damien, I'm sorry. No. You don't piss me. <laughs> You're like, I don't care if you have a plant wheat and then make your own a flour, but don't make the pastor say kiss and we don't see the cake. <laughs> because other than that, I'm going to be waiting for much. I want to understand what I'm you don't care about the supplier, but the supplier affect my ability to satisfy you. Are you understanding? Rain. Yeah. Are anybody here? Yeah. Rain. Rain. Friend. Ven. Nisha. All right. So now that you more Ven. Go ahead. So Ven Nisha. <laughs> so you come. So if you say Ven Nisha, who is a friend Nisha? So Ven Nisha, you come to now. Boom. I'm going to a restaurant and you get mutton. I know someone knows how to cook, so I'm teaching about this. So you get the mutton now and the mutton bony. You can make meat mutton out of it because it comes bony. No, you think it's a big business, but how do you buy your mutton? No. I'm going to say, what kind of curry coat this? I'm curry coat this. You know what I mean? Are you understanding? Yeah. Right? And you know, say the flour of the weevil, you can put now on strainer. Knock it out. You understand? That's how the weevil cook it, see how it tastes even nicer. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The weevil have certain things that go in high. Yeah, make it nice. But at the end of the day, what you get is what? Your input determines your output. So your supplier can cause for your customer to be dissatisfied. Are you understanding that? So therefore, the supplier is a part of the environment. You must take steps to manage that environment. To manage the supply, to have a secondary supply. Are, are, are you understanding me? So last Christmas we couldn't get egg. Me put in some salt for myself because we don't have people with me. We have to don't go and buy egg. Are you understanding? Me? Cool. Then now the marketing intermediaries. Marketing intermediaries include things like. <coughs> Things like the bank, things like the, 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 the advertisement agency, things like the, the distribution company. If you go up one supermarket to buy ice cream, and the ice cream is soft, soft, how you feel? You have to say every time you buy cream, it's soft, soft. But maybe cream is a little tough enough. But the distributor man don't have the right fridge. That's why you find like Red Stripe, give a fridge. Because they want it to come to the customer exactly how they want it, them set them fridge to the temperature and everything. Because then give me if you send it to my dad put now a meat fridge. <laughs> Are you understanding? No, you say I'm not making this meat fridge, but when I'm not selling no business. You go to a regular shop. I want to fridge them So you ask where the meat is. And then ask where the socks up is. <laughs> Are you understanding? So Red Stripe are trying to protect and manage intermediaries by giving him a fridge to serve Red Stripe all it must be served. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Everybody understand? Yeah. Kiss cake. Kiss
Kiss cake have to start now, give them one little see through something, you know, see? Like when you go up on the stall, eh? Because them usually just pack it up and it crush out, and then when you are biting now, the cream down at the bag, you have to dig in your finger. <laughs> so that's how it's supposed to pack. Now what happened now, you stress out and you can't bother. I don't like this cake, I'm trying to bite it, crush out. So kiss cake now, give them this thing, you have to stack it properly so that it don't crush out. Will you see how the intermediaries can affect it? Are, are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Good. Yellow pages, they put a front cover with dance hall or whatever. And the old Jamaica star comes. Old Christian Jamaica. Remember that? Yeah. And I say, oh, what is? And it was ghetto and all kind of bush. Now, yellow pages, so I remember that most of we will love dance hall and ghetto people. We don't use yellow pages. We ain't got no house phone. <laughs> <laughs> so most of we use it. We go up to old people. We just scan by them because the phone bought them too small. So they still have them house phone. So they have a problem because that is their reality, that's their culture. That's all is bad as far as they're concerned. Are you understand? Mm-hmm. What the apartheid done in South Africa? Me was alive when apartheid done and they let out Mandela and Jamaica that scene. So right now, man was 20, possibly 52. You think that he was still apartheid loving? He grew up for 22 years in apartheid. You think that right? You think me and South Africa go like me and them afraid? I'll be watching them keen like you, when I know what they're up to. Are, are, are you understanding? So therefore, you have to understand that different people are socialized in different ways. Things that my granny not even understand. Things that me not understand. Things that me say, no, who might have find it abusive? But when we that grow up, they were fine. Like if you're bridging a bigger call him bigger. No, it's wrong. You can not call him bigger. You can not call him black or you're, you're racially abusing him. You can't call fatty fatty. You're, you're fat shaming. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then Jamaica people take out that thing. Jamaica people fat people to love your enemy. You can't get to have you said it. No, now you can't say that you're fat shaming. Right? So the world has changed. So therefore, how you promote and who you promote to is going to be affected. So if you get out to a company, the company must understand that the world has changed. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We don't know how like comedians are going to make life again. And I used to watch comedy with all um, What is my name? Rick James. They know that called Rick James. James Chappelle. Yeah. Everything that the man says is no ban. Be sure. Because the man doesn't say everything about any group. And you laugh because it's a joke. No, everything is serious. We don't know how we're going to survive in the world. But... I'll say it. So you have even resellers. You have financial intermediaries, like the bank. If the bank has a high interest rate, then you have to charge a high price. Why you have to charge a high price? Because interest are part of the cost. So you have to add interest. Are you understanding? One time they have a bookstore in a pan you So I think called Book Street. Out of my room over here. You used to rent book. <coughs> and 40% of the cost. And you used to make money, you make mad money. So therefore, like, you have the math thing now. You wouldn't buy the book, you just come and rent it for 40% of the white asset. But then Martin come next year. I mean next semester, Martin come summer. So by the end of summer, I make 20% of am still at the book. I was making mad money. Like, I take out my bed out of my room. I have a book, my book everywhere. I have a bill all the place on the back of the table. But they tell for me, I'm going to start. Bookshop will tell for me, like, yeah, because people start buying book. They say, my book, my book. I have a website, I have a rent book, I have a money. And then we start buying the book direct now from Pearson's. So I actually buy the book for 60% and I rent it for like 40%. But it's really 80% of the 60%. No, more than that. <laughs> so I got the box. Right on my MCD, I'm going to say, yo, this is how I make, I do this thing. But I'm not work on you know, I'm just a rent book. And the bank said, I'm not going to the money. But could I grow? Now, thank God, I'm going to the money because I'm going to tell you that I'm going to lock down all of them. But if the bank is lend me the money, what? You can't satisfy my customers. Because be a people. You imagine a marketing class, 300 people are coming and say, what oh, marketing? You don't have enough money to buy a 200 marketing. So only the 30 will have like, you'll check the next semester. You might have failed by that, right? And link back. Right? So the old thing. But then bookshop will tell you. And you have to. But that is how intermediate can affect your business. Are, are you understanding? And then tell you now, I start. See all the boat I'm going to buy. Come and say, yo, I'm going to go by UTEC and take over UTEC. And then, but that doesn't make more sense. If you rent the book, then buy the book. You know, because 90% of the book, they may not ever use them again. 
You understand? So can I tell us, man? And then we start buy used book from people who buy it last year. If you go to Taylor right now and I back in my building, you build that out of my money. And then, yeah. As I said, the telephone. You still have to go to the bookshop. Right? So I'm showing you how the intermediaries. Now, if my body man, I like I get a look. Because my name changed and different. Right? So therefore, these are financial intermediaries. Right? Physical distribution firm, we don't tell about the ice cream already. Right? We don't tell you if a man carry my egg and he don't turn on the cold stove, the cold storage, then the egg squad. Are you understand what I'm saying? If you turn on the cold stove, the egg cook. So we don't really want to do that. The resellers, different people are going to have different <coughs> realities. Your competition. Now, firms must gain strategic advantage by positioning their offerings against competitors' offerings. The positioning is the place that the product holds in the mind of the consumer. Gatorade. What place it holds in your mind? Is that sport drink? Is that activity drink? Gatorade spends millions and billions of dollars to make that they on every basketball, to make that they on every football match, to make every sportman drink it, to sponsor Usain Bolt, so that every time you sweat, you want to get the rip. No orange juice. It's breakfast. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Huh? Orange and flu, yeah. Soup. Suppose your wife cooks soup vape on a Sunday. I'd be like, what is this? <laughs> Super sack the food. It's a place that all in the mind of the consumer. If we go home and see white rice on Sunday, we stress out. I'm like, is, is it Saturday? What happened? Am I missing the days? Do I not have work? So they go next for that two pieces. Now, but yo, you catch me up here. Show me two pieces first. Don't do white rice. So you have certain things that all have place in the mind. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So those things, for example, bone to kill up. Carry something to your mind immediately. Different from what being man. Somebody said, okay. <laughs> what man carries something different. Sizzler carries something different. They all have place in the mind. Are you understanding what? So you have to say to yourself now, the competition helps to define what position your place, your product all in the mind of the consumer. All right. <clears throat> What's the size of a party, a tasty party? What's the size of a tasty party? Depends on the size of a juicy beef patty. If a tasty patty big, it's bigger than juicy beef patty. If it's little, it's smaller than juicy beef patty. If at the right size, it's the size of juicy beef patty. But the patty is defined by the next man patty. That is how it is defined. <laughs> Are you understanding what? So now we don't have no definition. Where did you find on Google a patty should be 80 meters diameter and for, we don't know. But we look for other party and say, yes, this is a party. This is the size of a party. So taste is defined juicy beef party as much as juicy beef defined taste is party. Are you understand what I'm saying? Everybody understand? It's like mothers. Who eat from mothers, man? Because everybody loves cost mothers, but some of mothers still open. <laughs> so appear like the matter. They will not eat from mothers. And the worst thing, mothers is the most creative one, you know. All juicy beef do I watch mother's advertisement every you know? And then tomorrow they come out with it. They say mother's come more party cheese and power party juicy beef. So. <laughs> but tomorrow you see juicy beef, here we have cheese party. <laughs> That's right. So, everything, everything. A mother's hope with everything. A mother's first start sell food. A mother's no business. Mother sell her burger. <laughs> At dog, ice cream. A mother's first come up with it. Mothers have clothes, shoes, anything else. <laughs> but they were the most creative. And some of the people ever have bad mind. <laughs> because of a place that it holds in the mind. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No, juicy beef used to be country party. You never know that. You could have known where a girl come from by asking which one she like. If she like juicy beef, she come from country. If she like taste, she come from town. And then some of juicy beef just take over everywhere. I move from a town and all them things. But one time, juicy beef was country party. So I'm saying to you, the competition. What is a fast car? Compared to other car? 
It's not, oh, fast car is one that drives 110 kilometers. No, based on that car, this car is a fast car. Your competition defines you. Are you understanding what? So when you look on a youth and say, oh, it's a black, because the other people not that black. And you look on the next one and say, oh, it's a white, because the other people not that white. Are you understanding what? The competition defines you. So therefore, if your competition defines you, then your competition has set even the price. What's the price of a party? Based on what the other party is. How much you have taste the party? 160. How much you have juice in the party? One, suppose taste is 210. What would you do? Why? You don't know how much you need. You don't know how much you need flour. You don't know how much you need over for the worker. You say, oh, you so thief. Because it's a 120. So how oh, come you there? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Everybody understand? So your competition have an aim to make you either satisfy or dissatisfy your guests. Because the competition is going to define certain things. If you go to a hotel, you never go to a hotel. We are going to do some of that too. We are going to some hotel, try to some cheap price. We are going to go. Right now, your life is going to pop up. So, <laughs> you go to hotel. If you go to a hotel and you see a bunk bed, what is going to happen? <laughs> now, go back. I'm not staying. I'm like, you must be mad. Why? Because every other hotel have king says, oh, this one has a bunk bed. <laughs> but if every hotel has a bunk bed, it would not be a problem. Because hotel is bunk bed, like you never know, so hotel is bunk bed, like you just go hotel. <laughs> but because everybody else, are you understanding what I'm saying? So we go to the hotel other day, you know, and the man have a pool outside of the room. Swim up pool, you go to your room, you have your own pool. So if we go to the next hotel, you have that, we stress out, come on, my pool. Where is the pool? <laughs> So the next man I forgot to go out and eat and look over there. You may have a cover or something. What we need something out of front. Are you understand what? And so more and more now, you find the competition I got help to define. Everybody understand what? So one time, remember you take school fee to get iron and you it. And we were like, what? Yeah? We have to go raise up ours now. Because we have to say, yo, we don't want to go like them and teach more than me. <laughs> but the competition I got help to define. Are you understand? So when Harvard said, um, how much for you in Jamaica? We say, two million. And Harvard at 1.5. Harvard got to say, you must say, mother, we are Harvard, seven million for we of you. <laughs> are you, I uh, wonder if you understand me. So whenever I end restaurant, okay, baby, we're going to I end restaurant. How much for the food? Five days, what? <laughs> Can't be five days, that's not I end food. So you don't eat it? <laughs> start one day, what am I cook? <laughs> like, no, start one day, bro. None dog look alike, you know what I want. But if you eat goat, you can't eat dogs still, because they look like cousin to me. <laughs> goat and dog are cousins. Look one and go. <laughs> Any group that has an actual or potential interest in our impact on organizations' ability to achieve its objective is a part of its public. One of which is the media public. Now, the media affects how people see you, affects how people see a company. I'll give you an example. We never born yet. 2005, I was guild president. <laughs> oh, really? When you born? Yes. All right, cool. We were born a long time. When we had a guild president in 2005, I would kidnap the bursar. <laughs> uh, don't, don't follow me nowadays, that can't work. Right? And then we we'll go for school fee for Godom. And school fee Godom by $7,000. And then you would say, since you know, School fee go down, who don't pay down the yard. That's the registration. So we lock down the whole school. Lock down everywhere. Buy canned beef and say we have a lock down the place. Put gas in our local Toyota, Suzuki Swift. And we lock down the school, every gate. And um, there was a lady named Antoinette Hart when you step on the And Antoinette Hart said, yo, I'm the greatest thing. And I'm going fight for poor people and everything. And there was another lady named Barbara Gouda. We say, me at tea. <laughs> because we have pay with school fee. And poor people can't say, no, go to school and we are going for it. Everybody will listen to Anthony Art and love me. Sometimes I take taxi, then I charge. Like everything cool with me, general. Really, really. Everybody will listen to Barbara Good and never like me. Say, so what we have to pay for now? I'm happy here, bro. 
I want to reach it out the car and never remember it. Just be upon the same exact thing, but how it is covered. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The man was the berry. I think he was the first um, thing they have social sciences, first dean in the berry. So them called me now and say, so what about this funeral that must happen now by the university chapel? Plan read, you know. So dead people time up, living people time now. <laughs> and everybody will listen to that speech and course. It's rather disgrace and everything, right? But they call him wife and say by two o'clock we have to open it. But she did move it still and carried go um Andrews. St. Andrew Parish. Yeah, maybe feel bad about the part, but we have to do what we have to do, you know. What I mean? But the point I'm making here is the media can affect how you are perceived. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? So the media can take the same exact thing and cover it very different. And it makes you feel be perceived bad or perceived good. Are you understanding? Your company needs for the media to make it be perceived good. Everybody understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Government, if the government raise tax, it affect you. Yeah. And how you go about it, them raise minimum wage, it affect how much you have to charge for your product. Sorry, if the government pass a law, for example, in the Caribbean, the government have a law say, if a Caribbean country can provide it, you have to pay forty percent tax to buy it outside of the Caribbean. So me now I try to get that to my egg to sell it to Trinidad. That's government. The government remove that. Me can't compete with America. Because America has some farm with million fold. So when you go in my local 20,000 fold, that don't make no sense. Just the rejected egg alone is sufficient to make America liquid egg. Me have to use regular egg with people who want buy. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So government can affect how oh, you satisfy your customers. The government can set a price ceiling and say, you can't charge more than this with this production. And government can set a price floor, say, you can't charge less. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The government can pass a law at the dance hall for like two o'clock. So that affect you keeping a dance. Are you understanding how government affect you? Citizen action public, like Jamaicans for justice and them other people. People are lobby for all kind of rights, animal rights and all kind of stuff. Are you understand? People want the world for last wave and all them stuff. Those people are going to come and affect say, no, you cannot come with this coal mine because coal are going to make you can't breathe. And then, no, you understand? You can't take, um, where the Chinese money they want, go to Thailand because it have two lizards over there and those lizards they feel live. <laughs> you never hear about it. <laughs> I have a different opinion, but I don't say that. But not wrong, you know what I mean? There's no truth in the world. This is what you think about somebody else thinks. So if you them things, a lizard is important, fine. But we know that me dead be hungry, John Crocker, and He's not going to be like this guy, they like lizard and John Cross, and he's cool. He's going to be like eating. So if you have opportunities, you're going to be, development means that some environment affects, affect. but citizen action public exists. People will come and lobby for women to be employed, blacks, different things. They're not going to lobby for those things. And your company are going to be affected by it. Local publics, people live in the environment. Sometimes if on TV, like, um, people are costing them roof a, a rat because of bauxite mining and all kind of things. You ever see that? Eh? And them care about it with the dust and them are demonstrate that will affect your company. And because there are certain local publics, a lot of companies try to spend money within them communities, building up basic school, keeping trees, just keep a good vibe with the, pub, with the local public. Are you understand? And then now, you have the general public, which is just us. And you have the internal public, groups within the organization, managers, workers, all of those things. They are going to affect how you impact your workers. Any question? No question? I'll see you next week.